All right, guys, uh, <clears throat> this one has been a very tricky one. I've repaired many of these Duro meters all different years, but this one specifically baffles me a, a little bit. This is a, uh, I have it powered up now, so I'm very careful not to touch the mains that are right there. This one is a Duro Revision D, and it's a... Uh, uh, 96 so the pc is a uh, 168 40 42-4 so revision four of this Duro meter um i've repaired a whole bunch of these and this is the first one that's come to me from this year that's just baffled me first of all it came with um with a blown capacitor or a leaky capacitor leak and when i say leak i don't mean electric uh the 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 um the the juice went <laughs> everywhere it's all over the board i'll show you the damage in a minute but um i got it working i found out what the problem was the problem was this chip okay but there's a little bit a little bit of caveat to this okay i replaced this chip the brand new chip um let me show you this. These, this power supply is just the weirdest power supply design. I, I'm not sure. I think they did it because they're using off-the-shelf products, uh, parts. They could have, um, no, let, let me explain. So 110 volts come in, depending on what your, you know, your, the power, if you're in U.S. or whatever. But it comes out on two bobbins, which is uh, 9 volt, 150 milliamps, and 9 volt, 150 milliamps okay so there's two bobbins here and you can use the center tap and then create your uh 18 volts and then run it through regulators and all that stuff to your plus and minus for whatever power you need the way they designed it is that they put this bobbin and this bobbin both on parallel uh on parallel and they're using it to increase the milliamps so now this it has 300 milliamps to work on this. Now, that's a lot of milliamps for this little board. You don't really need that many. So 150 would have been perfect, but for whatever reason they wanted to do it, they did it that way. So the uh, DC comes in, it goes into the, the rectifier on this side. Here's a smoothing cap. Um, these have been recapped and these are temporary caps that I put in because I needed to solve the problem. But I'll tell you why this baffled me. First of all, I got it work to work. It was a chip, like I said. But this chip was intermittent. It would go on and off, on and off, depending on just time. You know, just letting it run. It would it would drift. So first thing is that these caps here must be low Z. Okay, so low ESR on both sides. Okay, this chip requires it. Now, you can't just put a regular cap in here. They need to be a uh, low ESR. Okay, again, these are only temporarily for now. But the funny thing is that this power supply or these op amps are working with 10 volt and I believe 7 volts or a little bit less on one side. Why are they not um, symmetrical? I, I don't know. They're, they're off. I mean, usually, you know, you put 10 volts, minus 10 volts, 15 volts, minus 15 volts, 7 volts, minus 7 volts. Why are they different? If you have an answer, please let me know. I would like to know why you're running op amps with different voltages. Maybe it's a DC offset. I don't know. Who knows? Um, the, these are the DACs here. We don't touch those. Here's a microprocessor. But let me show you. So right now we're getting uh, about 10 volts uh, from the uh, power supply, DC. And you can see it on my meter there, 10.6 volts. And then we have our seven volts here, or minus seven volts right there, almost eight volts. That's how they're running these op amps, okay? This is a charge pump because remember, nine, uh, 10 volts are coming out through here and you can bring up the 10 volts all the way up to 15 volts with this chip. They're running it at uh, 8 volts coming out, which is what they're using for their negative on the op amps, okay? 
So when this guy exploded or leaked, it did pretty, let me turn this off before I uh, give myself a shock. And, and this is more for documentary reasons. Um, maybe you run into the same problems, but okay, let me make sure the power is off. I don't want to go and shock myself. There we go. So as you can see here, this is the guy that exploded right there. And there is damage to the bottom of the board. Now, I took all of these out and cleaned all of the, the traces here, right? But I didn't clean up underneath the, the chip because it wasn't really there. It was really on the other side. And let me take this board out. So I really want you to see where the damage was. Okay, right smack in the middle there you see all the here let's you see all that corrosion that's where the damage was so i took all of these caps out let me zoom back out so i don't have this in front of my face i took all those caps out oh hold on a minute sorry about that guys i apologize we're doing this live and i'm not editing this it's not going to be a short video as you can see so I cleaned out the board here. I took all the caps out, clean here, here, but I left the chip on, okay? And I left, um, I left the socket there. There was no reason for me to remove the socket because everything looked fine. No corrosion was there. So I changed it. I put it back on. Still nothing. Still not working properly. I still had the wrong, um, I still had like 0.67 uh, volts coming out out of the charge pump here um you know i'm like okay so what's going on so i went ahead and i'm like you know what let me check the this 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 one here and this uh this transistor is not really a transistor it's a voltage regulator as you can see right there it's a 7805 right there 7805 so i checked that and that is producing five volts four that chip okay great i still don't have my negative rail so i checked the zener diode zener diode is fine clamping down the voltage i checked this one fine so i cleaned it put all the caps back on in a minute sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work so i said you know what let me take this chip out i took the chip out i looked at the pins Pins are fine. I cleaned out the pins just in case there was any corrosion. It's fine. Put it back in. It worked. And then a couple of minutes later, stopped working again. I'm like, what is going on? So I took the chip, the actual socket out. Okay. I took socket out. Uh, I looked at the pins. I checked all the single pins to make sure they're fine. And guess what? Everything is fine. No corrosion whatsoever. So... I said, you know what? Let me clean the bottom of it. There was no there was no liquid here whatsoever. None. I cleaned it. I cleaned the whole thing thoroughly once again. I even cleaned the bottom part, even though there's no vias that can go through. And um, that worked. So what I am thinking is that the electrolytic juice, the electrolyte, leaked. And it was making contact or or adding some sort of resistance or, or conductivity between these two capacitors, these, these two timing capacitors. And that was just going up and down, up and down, depending on, I guess, the temperature, the ambient temperature. So that threw me completely off. So I cleaned it. I ordered a chip. I replaced the chip. Now it's working fine. Now. I put everything back together. I, le I left it overnight. I came back. Everything was working great. I got on this morning on YouTube just to see if somebody else had the same problem. Sure enough, they didn't have the exact same problem, but I'm going to give uh, my a, a tip of the hat to one electronic uh, engineer that had an issue with the vias underneath this socket. He discovered that obviously the whole top is a ground plane, okay? 
And the only positive via are, the, are these little ones. But this whole thing is a negative ground plane. He discovered that the the vias that are here, the 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 holes, were almost touching the ground plane. How he discovered that, again, a, a master work of checking resistance, checking timing. He said he spent hours on on this. That would have completely. Uh, I, I mean, that takes a lot of time. Because you don't think there's a defect with the board. Sure enough, he took the chip out. He took the socket out. And the vias were, some of the vias were touching the ground plane here. So he had a problem with that. He had to scrape it off, clean it. I looked at mine. Mine is fine. So that wasn't my problem. My problem was the chip was a bit defective. And that juice, remaining juice, even though I cleaned all the way around, still underneath the chip caused that issue. So um, it's one of those things where, you know, you, you learn as you go. And even though I've repaired many of these, that one took me a little bit of time. Um, I would say I was, I spent maybe two hours working on this guy, trying to figure that out. And without a schematic, because I don't have this revision schematic, was a bit of a problem. So I had to like reverse engineer how this part worked. Um, and that just baffled me, completely baffled me. And like I said, if you guys have the answer to why these op amps work with odd voltages, plus minus odd voltages, let me know. Um, I know some of these work with 12, 14, some work with, you know, it's just awkward, very awkward the way they design these. And again, um, I, I love these units. I will continue repairing them. But why the convoluted and many changes, many changes on this power supply section. I have another one here. Let me uh, point to this guy here. I'm just going to handheld this real quick. And as you can see, this power supply is completely different. This power supply has a, a regulator on one side, and it has a, a, a four, six, a six-pin regulator on one side. It has the same chip here. It's got the uh, inductor here, which this inductor is on this side, but it doesn't have the big regulators. Um, both the same exact unit. Just one's made... Let's see what year was this one made? 97. 97. And this one's a 96. So there go there you go. And if you need to look at the faceplate, that's what it is. It's a Duro Telecine uh line level. And it's it's it, it's kind of like you know the regular DJ ones that people use. It's just made for um Cine, you know, for film and stuff use. Okay, they're both the same. So, um, yeah, this, this, this one was baffling. <laughs> Sorry for the long rant. I just had to document this thing because it was baffling me. All right, guys, uh, if you like, comment, subscribe. Hope this helps.